Ashley Hall is a retired registered nurse. RN. Money right now. I hope you brought some for us. <laughs> Ella Kate Hall and family, they both live in the city of Chicago. Without further ado, may I please invite you to the altar just to speak to us uh, tonight. Please, welcome. Oh, come on. You can do better than that. Come on. Put your hands together for the Lord tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. If you love the Lord, why don't you make some noise for the Lord tonight? Isn't he worthy to be praised? Hallelujah. At the name of Jesus. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. So you might as well praise him and worship him tonight. Hallelujah. Come on, give him some praise tonight. If you love him, praise him. Hallelujah. Have he's done something for you? Come on, give God some praise tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Certainly this evening we thank God for this congregation we thank God for this esteemed pastor pastor Emmanuel Adesanya and his lovely wife pastor Adonessa Senya we thank God for this wonderful church 25 years that God has blessed you all to be in the vineyard preaching the gospel and sharing your faith with one another that is a tremendous blessing this evening so why don't you put your hands together hallelujah for this wonderful church for christ life church come on put your hands together for this wonderful ministry tonight certainly we give honor to the lord we thank him tonight i won't be before you too long tonight but somebody said, is there a word from the Lord? Is there a word from the Lord? Yes, it is. And tonight, keeping in step with this wonderful theme, a season of laughter, I would like to invite your attention to the book of Genesis. The book of Genesis. And tonight we'll find... God's word and for the message tonight, Genesis, the 18th chapter. And we'll be reading and you're hearing verses 9 through 15. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And here begins God's word for this evening. And they said unto him, where is Sarah thy wife? And he said, Behold, in the tent. And he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah, thy wife, shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door, which was behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age. And it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. <laughs> Therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure? My Lord also being old? And the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I of a surety bear a child? which am old, is anything too hard for the Lord? Is there anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. Then Sarah denied, saying, I laughed not, for she was afraid. And he said, no, but you did laugh. 
And this evening, I would like to speak from the subject, the possibility of impossibility. I said the possibility of impossibility. You know, for you to really appreciate this theme or this message, you must really understand what impossible means. And I believe all of us in this auditorium, in this sanctuary, know what that word means. But in case you need some reinforcement, something that is impossible is not possible. Something that is impossible is unable to be or exist or happen. Something that is impossible can't be done or performed or affected. It is utterly impracticable. Something that is impossible is hopelessly unsuitable or difficult or objectionable. If I was to give you a few adjectives to describe something that was impossible, I would think of the word absurd hmm. or inconceivable or insurmountable or something that's just plain old preposterous. And that's what we're dealing with in this text tonight. Because God made a promise to Abraham that he would be a father of many nations. God told Abraham that one day he would look out and ask him to count and, and to, to tell to count up the stars if he could. And he said, that's how many children I'm going to give you. But you see, at this time, Sarah was barren and she could not conceive. And the fact that God would come to Abraham and tell him something that seemed totally impossible, the Bible says that even before Sarah laughed, <laughs> on one occasion back in the 17th chapter of Genesis, Abraham laughed also. Have God ever told you something that seemed so incredulous, so insurmountable, so unconceivable that you basically laughed when he told you. <laughs> you know, you, you, you told yourself, this, this can't be, no way, this, this cannot happen. But this evening for a few moments, I want you to consider the fact that with God, anything is possible. Mm-hmm. In fact, with God, nothing, you know, with God can do anything that he wants. Is that right? God doesn't have any restrictions. God doesn't have any limitations. If God said it, then it must happen. Amen? Amen. Oh, come on. You can put your hands together for that. I said, if God said it must come to pass. Now, I want you to realize when I speak in terms of something being possible, <laughs> whoo, see, that means that it may happen or it can be or it may exist or it is existing or it may happen or it can happen or it may be done or it will be done but you see that's just Webster's dictionary definition of possible but with God there's no maybe <laughs> no if God said it he will perform it and I want you to know tonight that I know that God has spoke to your hearts this evening. I know that God is dealing with every individual that's in this room. Because we're all on a mission for the Lord. Can you say amen? amen. 
We've all been called by God for a specific task. <laughs> Hallelujah. And sometimes when God calls you to do something, it, 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 it floors you because you, 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 you may tell yourself, I can't do that or I can't accomplish that. No, 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 no. But you got to understand what the Bible says. The Bible says in Philippians 4 and 13, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Amen? Amen. But not only that, the Bible says in Ephesians 3 and 20, now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all all that we can ask or think according to the power that work do you know that god can supersede your thoughts <laughs> god can go beyond what you can even imagine or even ask him and god is willing and he's waiting to meet your most desperate need but all he's looking is for someone to be able to believe him and trust him. Can you say amen? amen? And so Jesus says in Mark 9 and 23. Hallelujah. There was a man that was sick. And his child was sick. And he wanted God to do, Jesus to do something. And Jesus said unto him, if you can believe. If you can believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Amen. Now, I want you to know in this text this evening, God is making a covenant with Abraham. God is letting Abraham know that he's going to be a father of not just one nation, but of many nations. And God promised that he was going to give Abraham and his seed some land. Amen. And God said that kings would come of Abraham hallelujah and that he was going to make him a blessing in fact the bible says that all families of the earth would be blessed because of Abraham but the problem was that they had not a child and God came to Abraham and here in the 18th, 18th chapter, this is the second time that God now is confirming to Abraham that he's going to have a son. <laughs> and that you're going to name his son, your son, and his name is going to be Isaac. And Isaac means laughter. Is that right? And so now notice now when God needed to, 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 to confirm this to Abraham, the Bible says that God confirmed it by his own self. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews, the 16th, the 6th chapter in verses 13 through 18, it reads like this, For when God made promise to Abraham because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself. Saying, surely blessings I will bless thee, and multiplyings I will multiply. So after he had patiently endured, the Bible says that Abraham obtained the promise. Mm. For men swear, truly swear by the greater, and the oath of confirmation is to them an end of all strife. But God, but God, wherein he was willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the, immu the immutability of his counsel, he confirmed it by an oath. God swore on his own self. <laughs> That by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope that is set before us. Aren't you so glad that God has made you a promise tonight? And you know that God cannot lie. If he said it, it's going to happen. I said if he said it, all you have to do is wait on it. Come on. All you have to do is wait on the Lord. Amen. The Bible says that we have need of patience. That after we have done the will of God, that we might receive the promise. 
here in this text, God begins to renew and ratify his covenant that he made with Abraham. Can you say amen? In fact, the Bible says in Genesis 17, 1 through 8, that when Abraham was 99 years old, that the Lord had appeared unto Abram. And he said, look, I am the almighty God and walk before me and be thou perfect. Can you say amen? amen. That word perfect doesn't mean sinless, but it does mean complete. It does mean mature. You see, God does expect his, his children to be mature and complete. Can you say amen? amen? And so now he's telling Abraham, I'm taking you to another level, Abraham. I'm taking you to a new dimension. So I need you, hallelujah, to get in lockstep with my program. I know that, 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 that you've been waiting on me, but I'm telling you now. This is God speaking to Abraham. He said, look. Look at verse 2 in, in chapter 17. He said, I will make my covenant between who? Me and thee, and I will multiply thee exceedingly. And check it out. The Bible says that Abraham fell on his face, and God talked with him. And God said, as for me, behold, my covenant is with you, Abraham. And thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall your name no more be called Abram, but Abraham, for you're going to be a father of many nations. He said, I'm going to make you exceedingly fruitful, and I'm going to make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. Look at verse 7, and I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee, and your generations for an everlasting covenant. Can you say everlasting covenant? You see, we serve a covenant God, and God is in relationship with his covenant people. The choir did a fabulous job tonight talking about giving God and praising God from everlasting what? To everlasting. And so now we see this covenant or this contract or this agreement that God is now establishing with Abraham. He's telling them it's going to be a, a covenant that's going to last forever. And ever, and ever. Now notice this. He says in verse 8, I will give this unto you and to your seed after thee, and the land wherein thou art a stranger, and the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. And look at verse 15. And God said to Abraham, As for Sarah, I, thy wife, her name shall no more be called Sarah I, but Sarah shall be her name. And I will bless her and give her a son also. And give you a son of her also. Yea, I will bless her and she'll be a mother and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. And then Abraham fell on his face and laughed. See, there it is. And said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto him that is a hundred years old, and shall Sarah that is ninety years old bear? Can you imagine that? Abraham's almost a hundred. Sarah's almost ninety. And God stops by and tells Abraham and Sarah that you guys are going to have a son. It was almost inconceivable I mean, the Bible says that Sarah and Abraham, both of them laughed. They couldn't, have, they, they couldn't conceive it. They couldn't imagine it. But God said it was going to happen. And when God says something's going to happen, it's going to happen. Amen? You just got to be patient. You just got to have some faith. You just got to trust the Lord. The Bible says trust in the Lord with what? All thy heart. And lean not to your own understanding, but in all thy ways do what? Acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Notice now, and I'm almost through, and God told Sarah, thy wife shall bear a son. You will call his name Isaac, and I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant, and with his seed after him. And, 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 and notice now, after God told them they were going to have this child, you know, sometimes when God gives you a promise and it takes so long, sometimes we think we can assist God. Can you say amen? 
And so you know what Abraham and Sarah did. They got together and they concocted this plan with their maidservant, Haggai. Is that right? And then here comes Ishmael. Is that right? But you see, the problem was that Ishmael was not the son of promise. Can you say amen? You see, God promised Isaac and not Ishmael. Come on, say something to me tonight now. You see, you got to be in lockstep with God's covenant promise. And God's promise was that they were going to have a son. And the promised son, his name was going to be Isaac. And he was going to come forth from Sarah. Yes, Sarah had been barren. Yes, Sarah was old. Yes, menopause had come and gone. But when God speaks a word, when God says so, it will happen. Can you say amen? And so God established the fact that my covenant will be with Isaac. Hallelujah. And he told Abraham and Sarah that I'm going to visit you around this same time next year. But how many of y'all know if you really get a word from the Lord, you got to mix that word with something. Can you say amen? And that word is faith. Can you say amen? And how do you acquire faith? Well, the Bible says that faith cometh by what? Hearing and hearing by what? The word of God. Can you say amen? And so now look, faith demands our obedience and not our understanding. Can you say amen? You see, sometimes we're worried about the details, but you can't worry about the details. God got the details already figured out. Can you say amen? All you have to do is trust him. Come on, all you have to do is believe him. Honey, if God gives you a word, a word is just like good money in a good bank. Amen? It's going to be there. Come on, say something to me tonight. And so, I want you to know that the Bible says that without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must first believe what? That he is and that he's a rewarder of them that do what? Diligently seek him. And so I want you to know that this tremendous deed that God was going to do for Abraham and Sarah, it required faith on their part. And although they did laugh and although they did doubt, if you read the book of Hebrews, it will tell you that Abraham was strong in faith. In fact, he's one of the heroes of faith in the 11th chapter. But Sarah is another hero of faith in the 11th chapter. The Bible says that she also believed God. Although she was barren and although she was old, she believed God was able to open her womb and give her a son. And that's just what God did. Can you say amen? amen. And so this laughter that Sarah was laughing. <laughs> I want you to know, hallelujah, even though she may have doubted, and she did doubt, the Bible says, hallelujah, that God asked Abraham a question. He said, after I said that you were going to have a son and your wife was going to have a son, he asked Abraham, why did your wife laugh? Abraham, the Bible tells us, and this didn't really give us an answer, hallelujah, but you know, Sarah didn't laugh out loud. <laughs> she laughed within herself, but God still heard her. Can you say amen? Because God hears everything. Is that right? See, there's two things I need you to know about this passage. First is that God is omniscient. This is what we learned from this passage, that God knows everything. Can you say amen? God knows everything about us. But not only is God omniscient, he is omnipotent. He is all powerful. God is almighty. He's, he, he, he's known as El Shaddai. He has all the power in the world. He, he created the heavens and the earth. Is that right about Am I right about it? He created the sun, the moon, and the stars. He created all of humanity. So there is no limitation. There is God has all power in his hand. Now notice as I get to my conclusion for this sermon tonight, 
I need you to understand that there is nothing too hard for God. Amen? There is nothing impossible for God. Hallelujah. Because God is always true to his word. Can you say amen? He always keeps his promise. Matter of fact, I'm, let, me, let, me, let me just let you know something. Look, look, the, the Bible says in Hebrews 12 that the word of God is what? It's quick. It's alive. And it's powerful. And it's sharper than what? Any two-edged sword. Piercing even into the dividing and asunder of the soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow. And it is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of our heart. God knows what we're thinking. Can you say amen? He knows our motives. Come on, say amen. amen. He's familiar when we wake up with us, and he's familiar when we lay down. That's what David, the sweet psalmist said. Nothing is hidden from God. Amen? The prophet Isaiah picks it up in the 55th chapter in the 8th through the 11th verse, and he says, look, these are the words of the prophet. He said, my thoughts are not your thoughts. Hallelujah. This is God, by the way. Neither are your ways my ways, said the Lord, Jehovah. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not hither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it to bring forth them bud, that it may give, give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater, here it is, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. Hallelujah. Don't you know it will not return unto me void. If God said it, I said if God gave you a word, if God gave you a promise, you can bank on it. It is settled. It's going to happen. If he said it, it is so. Can you say amen? Because his word cannot return unto him void. But it shall accomplish, my God, that which I please. And it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I have sent it. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, I want to leave with you this assurance. That God is able to do for you beyond your wildest imagination and expectations. Tonight. You may need salvation tonight. There may be someone here that's seeking a closer relationship with the Lord. You can have that relationship tonight. You can have salvation tonight. Tonight you may be struggling with an addiction and you need some deliverance, but God is able to deliver you tonight. Can you say amen? Maybe you are struggling in your relationships tonight with your home. Or maybe you are having trouble on your job. But God is able to deliver you. God is able to speak a word of healing and restoration for you tonight. All you have to do is believe him. All you have to do is trust him. Can you say amen? amen. You see, with man, things are impossible. But with God, I said, but with God, all things are possible. You know what Jesus told his disciples on one occasion, and I'm going to leave you with this. It says, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. And you know, when Jesus shared that with his disciples, the Bible says that they were amazed. They were astonished. And they said among themselves, not out loud, just like Sarah, who then can be saved? And Jesus, looking upon them, said, with men, it is impossible. But, with, but not with God. For with God, all things are possible. Come on, put your hands together tonight for the possibility of impossibility. Yes, God can make the impossible possible tonight. God bless you and thank you.
for your patience.